flagship edition of Locked on Astros. And we have a special guest today. The topic of the day is one Jeremy Pena. And we've got Steve Tripper here who may know a thing or two about Jeremy Pena, the World Series MVP, the gold-gloving phenom that is just, I think, the biggest star in Houston sports right now. Let's talk about Mr. Pena and show some love on Locked on Astros. Hello and welcome to Locked on Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked on Houston Astros and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked on Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You find me on Twitter at Eric Talk Stros. Find the show at Locked on Astros, your team every day. Brett, where can I find you at? They can find me at H-Town Wheelhouse on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. They can find me at Stros411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive, always Stros. All right, and we got a special guest, Steve uh, Trimper. You were a uh, Division One coach. Uh, you used to coach Jeremy Pena over at the University of Maine. Uh, where can he find you on Twitter and all that? <laughs> well, first off, Brett and Eric, thanks for having me on tonight. Yes, I'm on Twitter. It's just uh, Steve Trimper with a little underscore in between. Um, you know, I'm not a big social media guy, but I started to get in Twitter a little bit over the last couple of years and communicating that way. But uh, I really appreciate you having me on and talking a little baseball and talking a little bit about Jeremy. All right, guys, thank you for making Locked on Astros podcast your first listen every day. Whether it's on YouTube, go and subscribe to us. We talk about Jeremy Pena a lot, and uh, he's one of our favorite players. And uh, it's just awesome that uh, you lose somebody like Carlos Correa and somebody like him just steps up. But also listen to us on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast. Go and check us out. So, yeah, we got a, a lot to talk about today. Um I know the a lot of focus is going to be on Jeremy Pena, but uh, Brett, I'll go and let you get started with some of the questions. No, yeah, definitely. So you're a Division One coach. You're now at Stetson University. You're no longer with the University of Maine. Um, and we'll get into some historical names and, and some really good products that they've upheld. I'm going to ask you about some strikeouts and maybe a record that you guys may be approaching next year. But before we get into um, Mr. Pena, I think that's what everybody wants to hear about mm -hmm. here in Locked on Astros Nation. As a Division I coach, you have the you have the expectation, you come to university to bring wins. You also have the expectation that players come to your program because your hope is that you develop them into players that go beyond college, that play professional baseball. So as a Division I coach, how do you juggle – the expectations of a program versus <clears throat> developing players and making that work. Yeah, that's a great question, and, and uh, you know, I think that obviously we're we're at our our level, Division One. Um, you know, try to represent the university well. Um, you know, I'm at Stetson University. Uh, they really care about baseball here. It's uh, it's a very traditional sport. We have a lot of uh, support from the community here in Deland, Florida, um, but. In the same sense, also, there's a lot of individual attention we're giving to our student athletes. And, you know, part of the reason sometimes people choose a school like Stetson is they might be able to get in the lineup a little bit quicker, maybe maybe as a freshman or a sophomore, kind of like Jeremy did at the University of Maine. Because, you know, Stetson and, and, and Maine, the two places I've coached most recently over the last 20 years of my career, you know, they're, they're basically a mid-major Division One school. You know, they don't play Power 5 football. So, you know, that doesn't mean they're not good in sports and not good in the Division One level. We've had some great teams at the University of Maine, um, and that's got a big tradition there also. And certainly at Stetson, you know, as recently as 2018, we were in the Super Regionals and ranked fourth in the country. And, uh, you know, uh, so you can do it at a, at a smaller school, so to speak. So some of these student athletes choose us because they might get here and get in a lineup and be able to develop a little bit quicker. So it's, it's a big deal for us on a recruiting standpoint when, you know, Stetson has, you know, Jake DeGrom, Corey Kluber, uh, Logan Gilbert, who's with the, uh, the Mariners right now, and certainly three or four other guys that are on the cusp of making rosters for next year. That's a recruiting tool for us. So we certainly want to use it as a recruiting tool to get guys to go to our school. 
All right. So I know that there's a thing on TikTok they do where it's like, how does this become this? Uh, <laughs> and looking at Jeremy Pena's stats in college, uh, he had one home run in 2016. He had six home runs in 2017, five home runs in uh, 2018. How does he become a 22 home run hitter? And yeah, that's a great question. I mean, he obviously has got a lot of hard work over the last few years. And I think playing down in the Dominican League, talking to Jeremy last week, I was fortunate enough to see him at the Golden Glove Award in New York City uh, uh, two weeks ago, two weekends ago. But, you know, it, it, it's a it's a story that um, it kind of I haven't told it that often until the last month. <laughs> I think I've told the MLB.com. I've told it to the Boston Globe. I've told it to the New York Papers. Um, you know, Jeremy was, was, was just a, a lightly recruited kid. Um, it, it, it's kind of crazy how he ended up. I had a college room, a, a teammate of mine that was high school, was a high school coach in Rhode Island and told me about him as a sophomore, as he coached against him as a, a an opponent in the other team. And, and I actually went down to see Jeremy play. Um, funny story is the game got snowed out and I decided to stick around. I had to go back to coach my own team and I had them have my assistants run two days of practice and I decided to jump in a hotel another night and see Jeremy and got a chance to meet his father Geronimo and you know the second I the snow cleared off the field as we say and that's not a fish story it's really what happened um you know he was probably five foot seven five foot eight and about 150 pounds and uh I just saw the ball go in his glove and out of his glove so quick during pregame infield and I said to myself, I don't care if this kid hits 100, he's got to come play shortstop for us because he's going to save a ton of runs. And, you know, two weeks later, him and his fa- his folks drove up to Maine, up to Orono, Maine, from Providence, Rhode Island, and they actually committed at that point. And Jeremy started to grow. His junior and senior year, he started to take off a little bit. The big schools still didn't come calling for him. It was more, you know, the local New England schools was like, you sure you want to go to Maine? And he, he, you know, kept true to his commitment and came to Maine. And he really started to, to take a, a liking to working out. He really didn't, and he'll tell you this story, he didn't really lift a lot of weights or do much. When he got to Maine, he started getting around some bigger and stronger, faster guys. And I think he just kind of fed off of that. And his work ethic is through the roof. I, you know, I remember his freshman year, and I coached him for a year and a half, and then I took the Stetson job. And then my assistant took over and coached him his draft year in 2018. But I remember he put a tire in his room, his dorm room, and he was whacking that thing, making noise all night long, hitting that tire, trying to get himself stronger and bigger. And, uh, you know, he he just has tremendous work ethic. I think that's something that he's done um, when he was in college. And then certainly, you know, when he took off uh, as he got his professional career going, I had the opportunity to see him two summers ago when he broke his hand. He was in double A. He was kind of like the heir apparent. He was going to be coming up. And he broke his hand, and he was down in their spring training site. And I just happened to be recruiting in Jupiter that weekend in West Palm. And so we spent three days together and kind of reconnected. And, um, you know, here he is doing rehab. He's got his hand in a cast. He's working out, you know, three times a day at that point. And obviously he got himself better, and he got on that roster as the taxi squad going into that World Series run the year that uh, Correa was still the shortstop. And then, you know, they traded him away and, and, and made him the, the next guy coming up. So his work ethic is through the roof. You know, and that's what I've heard. Um, I've actually recently spoken with, uh, you know, people close to him. And they said one of the things that separated him from the other kids was his work ethic. Yeah. Um, I know his, I know that um, he's got people in, in his corner that, that talk about this. And I actually saw, I, I can't remember if, if I heard the story or if I read it and you can kind of confirm the validity of this or, or, or you can add to it, you know, um, based on a true story, I guess we would say here um, from what I hear when, when you met Geronimo and when they mm-hmm. brought Jeremy to you, he basically said, I'm leaving you a good baseball player. I don't want him to come back the same. I want him to come back better. Is that, <laughs> is that basically what he said to you in a nutshell? Yeah, I mean, Geronimo is a tremendous baseball mind in his own and, 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 a, and a tremendous teacher. I think the biggest person in Jeremy's life is not Steve Trimper, his college coach, or even some of his minor league coaches and infield coaches. It really is his father, uh, Geronimo. Geronimo would work out with him like crazy. I can remember his freshman year, Geronimo coming up on weekend series 
and he's hitting them ground balls at 9 a.m. And, and in Maine in April, it's usually about 26 degrees wow. with a nice bright sun coming up at that time in the morning. And he would be playing a 16 inning doubleheader, and he's out there with his dad taking ground balls. And and uh, but but his father was not one that would come in and tell us how to do our jobs. He was genuinely trying to to have us with our input make him better. And and I think you know when you go to college. It, Yes, you can teach hitting and ground balls and how to throw 90 and, you know, give them a, sl- a slider, or, you know, the the, the, the the parts of the game that we all are schooled to teach at the college and professional level. What college does for you that I don't think a lot of people talk about, it talks about the success and failures, living on your own, having teammates, having to grind out, going to class, 6 a.m. lifts, trudging through the snow in Jeremy's case at Maine. I, I Obviously, don't have that anymore. It's Stetson down in Florida. I kind of gave that up, and I'm not, yeah, you know, and I'm happy about that. But, you know, there's a lot of those things that I think that was a building block for Jeremy that his father, Hieronymo, was talking about was get him better. It's not just about hit more home runs or be a better shortstop. It's about growing up. And I, I truly believe that that Jeremy's college career did that. And you know, we had a small part of that. You know, it was a lot of his teammates too. He's he's extremely tight. To Danny Casals and Nick Silva, you know, they were three peas in a pod, I called them as freshmen. And, uh, you know, they, they kind of went through their college career together, worked out together, and taught each other things about getting through the ups and downs. And uh, I got another great story for you. Danny Casals is his, one of his closest friends. He was, uh, he's from Miami, and he was a third baseman. So I had Jeremy and, and uh, Danny as a third baseman and a, and a shortstop, two freshmen. Danny actually ended up getting drafted, you know, later rounds his senior year in the 30th round and had a couple of years. Uh, and so, and his, the other one was, pay, uh, excuse me, Nick Silva, which is actually A-Rod's uh, uh, nephew. So okay. he, he, the three of these guys hung out together. So I got a call one night about these guys have an emergency in their freshman dorm. And I'm like, all right, here we go. what they do? They snuck beer in. I got to go through all the, you know, the things a coach does in college. Well, they were trying to cook a Cuban dish in the dorm room in a frying pan and they put a frozen chunk of beef into a hot frying pan of oil. And what it did it exploded all over the two of them. And they had to go to the hospital because they had like wow. second degree burns of these two freshmen. So, you know, it's it just, it's a story that I kind of reminisce with Danny and we kind of laughed about it last week when I was at, I saw Jeremy and his family and his, uh, his girlfriend at uh, the gold glove dinner. We were connected for a while telling old stories. So, um, you know, just just a lot of good special memories that he had with his friends and, and teammates and coaches at University of Maine in college. You know, that's awesome. I know here in the next segment, um, we are going to talk more about Jeremy Pena, what really separated him from the rest of the crowd and was he a vocal leader or not. And it sounds like when Jeremy Pena was on the field that you guys were safe at shortstop. Well, since we're talking about safety and it's the holidays, I want to talk about Simply Safe. Simply Safe is an alarm system that I would recommend for anybody. Why? Well, right now, the deal of the of the century, I would say, 50% off the Simply Safe home security system. It's the number one rated in the country. It's their best offer of the year. And during the holidays, property crimes like burglaries, package spikes, package theft spike nationally, and our friends at Simply Safe, they want to give you this system 50% off because they want you to have peace of mind and save money. It's the only alarm system that we use in my house, and it's got great, effective technology. You have this extra support, 24-7 people monitoring online. You can call them whenever you need to. They've got a wide variety of high-tech sensors and just the peace of mind of knowing that the best home security system of 2022 for a third year in a row is simply safe. Whether it's monitoring using their fast protect technology or whether it's capturing something on an app that you have on your phone. You can let friends in if you're away and they need to let your dog out. You can see if the threat is real or not. They will alert alert the authorities, but only when there is a real threat. And their system is less than a dollar a day, and it's less than half the price of ADT's traditional professionally installed system. So don't miss the chance to save big this holiday season. The only security system I recommend. Get 50% off any new Simply Safe system. Um, at simplysafe.com slash locked on MLB today. That's simplysafe.com slash locked on MLB today. There's no safe like Simply Safe. 
Alrighty. So I know that um, Jeremy Pena kind of made himself a big leader in the playoffs. And I think a lot of that, you kind of mentioned it earlier, came from his experience in the Dominican playoffs and where he's playing around all these other major league baseball players and he's getting the the game winning home runs. He's uh, living up to these high expectations and he's not even, he's just a minor leaguer. The Astros thought enough of him to bring him up and put him on taxi squad in the, on the 2021 playoffs. So um, as a, uh, as you were coaching him, mm-hmm. what, um, what kind of stood out about him? I know you already talked about his defense and his worth ethic, but overall, what else um, did you admire about Jeremy Pena, the player? And I guess the person. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's easy to sit here and watch him play now. And, you know, he's got these tremendous tools, you know, we always, in college baseball and professional scouting, you know, you look for the five tools, you know, the hit, hit with power, run, throw, and field. And, you know, those are their Mike Trout guys, you know, or your, your Bryce Harper, the one that can do it all. And Jeremy certainly has, has those tools. But, you know, there's something I talk about all the time is that sixth ingredient, which is just the love of the game, the compete factor. And, and, and Certainly we talked about work ethic, so, you know, we don't have to keep going on about that. But one thing that stood out to me is Jeremy loves to compete and loves to to win. <laughs> and, you know, he has fun at it. Um, you know, those home runs weren't hit so he could pimp the home run and do a circle and do a bat flip. I mean, he was genuinely trying to hit the ball out of the park so he can get to his teammates and celebrate and go up by three runs. And, and uh, you know, I, I just – I love the fact that I got to sit back from my chair and watch – um, what he did with that club at such a young age for, you know, the city of Houston. And, you know, he kept co- say, putting out tweets and, and his comments were, this is for you. This is for the city. This mm-hmm. is for the fans. You know, he's winning and trying to compete for that exact reason. Um, and, and I think that that comes a lot from his father, the way he was brought up. Um, you know, hit, getting up at five o'clock in the morning, I see some of the private chats there about how he worked out and hit a tire. Yeah, he did all that. You know, work ethic can be talked about, but it's really about the fact that he wanted to win. He wanted to be better than he was yesterday. He wasn't trying to be the best shortstop in the country. That's not what he was trying to do. He was trying to be better than he was yesterday and just keep going every single day. And I think that that's what you've seen in his career professionally. How many people leave a minor league season of 100 and whatever, 50-something games or grinding it down, and then he jumps on a plane and he goes and plays another, what, 80, 90 games – in the Dominican league or right. you know, the winter ball and, you know, and plays at a high level all along trying to work out and trying to get himself ready for spring training. Like this guy hasn't had a day off. <laughs> you know, So I think that's his compete factor that the fans of, uh, of Houston have to understand that you have a highly competitive person that wants to win. Yeah. Brett, real quick. Um, I, I remember Carl's Cray when he came up, he kept on saying, I don't want to be just be a good shortstop. I want to be a great shortstop. But I think that that just showed his um, that he was cocky and everything. But I think what Jeremy Pena is, he he knows he's a great shortstop, but he doesn't have to go out and show it. He doesn't have to be boastful. He just goes out there and just does it and just gets results on the field. And we we saw that he's one of the first rookie shortstops to win the. Um, the uh, gold glove. So yeah, definitely. Um, that's, that's good to hear. Yeah. So one of the things I want to ask you about, cause you, you got to go to the gold glove ceremony is you got to, you know, see that with him be around these perennial all-stars, you know, the miles straws, I mean, Stephen Kwan, all these guys yeah. that won gold gloves. What was that like for you? You know, <laughs> as, as a college coach, you see players come and go and, and, and obviously to be at that level, you have to be able to have some sort of ability to really connect with the players, to bring players in number one, but to see them go on to have you be a part of that. Is that just where, I mean, is that a moment where you're just going, wow, this is, this is really what it's all about. This is why I love what I do. Yeah. You know, it was kind of a fluke. I actually, we have a friend, um, uh, one of our, one of our current teammates, our players at Stetson, his father's one of the sponsors and we're a Rawlings school and I've been with Rawlings forever. I mean, those, those guys have been the best to me. So the, so I actually had to go to New York city for a set, an, another uh, uh, dinner that weekend engagement. And so it just happened about two months ago, Rawlings and this other person that sponsors the dinner said, Hey, why don't you go to the gold glove dinner with your wife? we got great tickets. You can see it's what an event, 700 people. 
we'll have you sitting up front. So I was like, great, you know, I'm going to be in New York that weekend anyway. Then all of a sudden, Jeremy becomes a finalist. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, you know, if Jeremy gets it, I bet, you know, this is the one time I'm going to go to this dinner. And uh, and then, of course, I was like, please, please, please. I'm calling Rawlings. I'm like, can I put in any votes? Can I help out? Like, you know, <laughs> trying to pull the strings. And sure enough, he gets announced as the gold glove. And Mike Thompson, who is the VP of Rawlings, who runs the whole dinner, called me that morning. He's like, your boy got there. And so, um, so you know, I obviously texted uh, Jeremy and um, – and Geronimo right away and told him I was going to be there. And and then all of a sudden we're like, let's sit at the same table and let's enjoy the night together. So we got some great pictures. And <clears throat> I mean, Jeremy, a unique thing about that is I didn't know how these dinners go. And a Hall of Famer gives out the gold, gold glove per position. So you got Don Mattingly giving out, you know, uh, first base. Uh, wow. You know, you got, you know, uh, just these Hall of uh, – Cal Ripken's giving out third base sitting at the next table. I'm like, that's Cal Ripken, you know. And um, so it's a great story. Ozzie Smith was at the table and was giving out the shortstop gold glove. And he told a great story that how this is very unique because he gave the gold glove to a former teammate's son because Geronimo was, was That's right. Ozzie Smith's teammate right. with the Cardinals. And so they kind of reconnected. Then here he is giving out, you know, the gold glove to, oh. to his son. And so he's like, boy, I really feel old in this story. But I thought it was really unique. And, you know, the one thing about Jeremy at this dinner, I mean, you had 20 Hall of Famers, Gold Glove winners. I mean, the list went on and on of the people that was there. And Jeremy's a very humble person. You know, um, he, he's, uh, he's, he's his girlfriend. She's a wonderful girl from Bangor, Maine. She ran track with uh, at the same high school my daughters went to. And then she went to the University of Maine. And so my wife, Lisa, and I were sitting there talking on the side. And they're like, boy, this has been an overwhelming last month. And I was like, just get ready what's coming up over the next couple of years here. And, he, you know, I, I don't think he's a person that's really, you know, um, going to gonna sit there and just showboat it. And he doesn't do that type of stuff. He's just really humble. His parents are, are, are so good with that and, and brought him up the right way. And he appreciates everything that he's earned and what he's um, been rewarded you know, with the great city of Houston, the club that they've done so far. So he was on that stage, but he was certainly humbled to be up there. And But also he's got that little wink in his eye that he knows he belongs there too, which is what I like about Jeremy. He likes to compete. Exactly. You know, and I, I think in this next segment, well, we want to, you know, I always want to focus on Mr. Pena, but um, I want to talk to you about um, a pitching record that you guys may be able to uh, reach this next year. And before we do that, I want to talk about the folks at betonline.net because betonline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends of every professional and amateur league out there. From football to basketball to soccer and esports, we've got it all at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at betonline as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. I mean, look, do you want to put in on where Aaron Judge goes? Do you want to put on if the Astros are going to win back-to-back World Series? Is Jeremy Pena going to be the World Series MVP two years in a row? Anything you want to look at like that, check it out. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. All right. I know that Brett and I are both teachers and uh, we like to see our students go on to be successful, not just mathematicians or historians. Uh, I'm a math teacher. He's a history teacher, but uh, we like for them to go on to be great people, have successful lives. And do we always get to see what happens to them in the future? No. Some of them may become friends with us on Facebook, but you have a very unique opportunity of seeing what your your work and other people's work in front of you leads up to these guys becoming major leaguers. So what does the success of a major league player do for a university or for you as a coach? Yeah, you know, I, I, I just I don't think it's a lot of credit to the coach. I think what ends up happening is, you know, the, the student athlete that chooses us, we, we try to teach them and, as best we can. You mentioned a great point. You guys are both teachers. So am I. We're, we're all in the same room. We, we, we teach everybody a little differently. We try to get the most out of them. We try to drive them to be the greatest they can. Um, you know, when, when we're successful, you know, I, I've always said it this way. 
the wins, you know, the reward, the wins, the 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 salaries, the the job promotions, the media you get, they're all rewards. The success is when you have really good people around you and you see them uh, building a program or, 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 you know, Houston Astros over, you know, almost a dynasty at this point. Stetson baseball, it's not just a team, it's a program. Teams are built for one year. You know, we don't do that in college. We try to build a long-standing program where, you know, the history of Stetson has like 18 regionals, super regionals. We got a lot of guys in the big leagues. I think that's because our program's strong. So when someone like Jeremy Pena makes it to the big leagues, it does a tremendous amount for the University of Maine, let alone the state of Maine. Um, I need yeah. to talk about that for a second. It's the only Division One school in the state. Wow. And, you know, when I was there, you got, you know, three news stations and two newspapers and – they cover everything. You're a big deal. It's almost as big as Alabama football for that, that state. Wow. So when a kid gets a speeding ticket going up College Ave, you hear about it in the papers. But also when you win a regional game or somebody like Jeremy makes it, you hear about it. And um, so I think that that's really important to the state of Maine um, and the New England area, too. You know, Jeremy, you know, spent you know the, his younger years in Dominican Republic and moved to Providence when he was around 11 or 12. But he played most of his baseball in Providence and, and played Legion baseball and played for the local travel team that's there, l and I still remember the travel team he's on. The, um, the guys that, you know, coach that program are really special people. So he, he grew up in the snow, you know, cold, you know, you know, tough times to hit kind of thing. So it just goes to show you, you can, you can make it to the big leagues and become an all-star um, and a gold glove winner from anywhere on the, in the country. You don't need to be just a person from Florida or Texas or California to be a guy that has chances. So, um, you know, I think it does a lot. You know, at Stetson, we do have a pretty good tradition. You know, uh, you know, right now, Logan Gilbert's on a huge rise right now. He pitched on our 2018 team that had a lot of success. You know, Brooks uh, Wilson made the 40-man roster right before the season happened. Then he ended up, you know, elbow went. So he took this year off and got the Tommy John surgery. You know, we have, you know, three or four guys, other guys from that team that are in AAA right now. But, you know, when you mention a Jake DeGrom and a Corey Kluber, it puts Stetson on the map, you know, and not just for baseball. It's like, oh, they start looking into the university. Wow, they got a great law school. They got a great business school. And we celebrate those things. You know, those are very important to celebrate. So I think that um, anytime you get this kind of press or kind of notoriety, it, it's really important for not only the program and the coaches, um, but it, it's it's just as important for the university as a whole. And that's the thing I want to hit on, you know, here here in a little bit is talking to parents that may that that may listen to this or even kids that listen to this, because every minor leaguer we've talked to that either went to a mid major or D one or D two or D three school, they all say, you know, some of them, you know, I I, I think it was Joe Record or Jonathan Sprinkle said they almost missed out on college because they were so focused on D one. Mm -hmm. You know, they end up going D2 or D3. But I want to ask you about this. So for a second straight year, Stetson had three pitchers with 100 <laughs> strikeouts. The yeah. only other team to do that is Rice in 2002, 2003. Mm -hmm. Now, no one's ever done that three consecutive years. So my question is this, in a similar way that Hunter Brown is a strikeout bandit, are there things that you're looking at doing or teaching these guys to try to accomplish that? Or is that something that has to happen organically? Yeah, I think a little bit of both. Obviously, you know, you got a, you got a philosophy as you coach about what you want to do. And, and uh, you know, I think we've been fortunate to have some really good talent here at Stetson. And um, we, we, you know, have had some great pitching coaches that have helped develop them. Um, I'm really excited about the pitching coach we got right now, Daniel Latham. We just hired him away from Tulane University. And he came over to Stetson, and I, I think he came in because we, we got a pretty good core of arms this year. <laughs> so um, I'm excited to see what this group can do. I think this is the best pitching staff we've had since 2018 when we had all those those strikeout guys and, and, and can throw strikes. But we really look on focus. It doesn't have velocity with us. We, we look for throwing strikes. You know, so we have guys, you know, on our staff that, you know, they're 85 to 87 miles an hour, but they still know how to throw inside. They know how to mix it. We do a lot with a slider. Um, you know, we're fortunate right now. Our current team has a lot of hard throwers. We got some velocity guys, but you know, our third starter is a lefty that has six pitches and knows how to mix it around. I mean, you know, the Greg Maddox style, so to speak. Those guys sometimes don't get the pro looks. I get that, um, but they win in college for us. And so, you know, we're hoping to continue the trend of 
having great pitching. Um, I don't want to label us pitching you because then all of a sudden I start jinxing ourselves and calling ourselves name. I, I do have a little bit of an ego, but I also want to be humble at the same point. And, uh, you know, we just want to make sure that we're just trying to be better than we were last week and last yes, year. Right. Forward. All righty, guys. So uh, we have um, – we're going to go and continue to show after this. We're going to close it out for our audio listeners. But uh, I want to go ahead and give you a second to go ahead and once again uh, tell us who you are and uh, where they can find you. Yeah, sure. You know, Steve Trimper, the head baseball coach at Stetson University. Obviously, our webpage has a lot of info about us. And, you know, I'm on Twitter at Steve Trimper. You can look us up and, um, you know, uh, always love to take questions. And I'm always on DM. That's the one thing I do. I try to respond. I responded back to Brett when he asked about doing the interview. So, I can be found anywhere there. All right. And guys, we are going to continue this conversation on YouTube. So if you're listening to the audio version, go ahead and go over to YouTube, subscribe to us, and we'll go and continue the conversation a little bit. But uh, you've been listening to Locked on Astros podcast. My name is Eric Eisman. You can find me on Twitter, Eric Talks Rose. You can find Brett at H-Town Wheelhouse. And we are the Locked on Astros podcast, your team every day. So I wanted to go ahead and ask you a question, and it's probably a silly question. You don't have to give me any names, but what's since you're a college coach, what's the um, the like the dumbest or silliest thing that one of your players have done off the field, like as just being <laughs> college kids? Oh boy, some things I probably <laughs> don't want to talk about. Um, <laughs> I got a crazy story. And I don't mind sharing this one. Um, no I, names. Yeah, I know. I don't mind sharing this one. Um, you know, the guys play around a lot. They always mess around the locker rooms. And, you know, sometimes they take things a little bit, you know, too far as, as we go. But, you know, I, I think that, you know, when our when our guys um, uh, in the two, on the 2018 team, this was kind of like a thing that just drove me crazy. Um, we had a kid named Joey Gonzalez, and um, he was actually – I think it was our MVP. He, ended up gra- he actually got drafted by the Astros. <laughs> so oh. he, he got drafted, I think it was the 20th or 23rd round that year in 2018 by the Astros and played three or four years. I think he was up in double-A, and then he ended up you know, being released. But we were making a run that year. At the end of the year, we ended up – we were trying so hard to win everything because we were one of the mid-majors they were talking about being a host. And you got to have a really good RPI. So the end of the year, we're playing Florida, Florida State, the Miami. So you're really trying to lock horns with these guys to grab these RPI points to go from 26 up to 20, up to 18, you know, trying to get in that top 15 so you might be considered as a host. Now, here's a crazy thing for you to get off subject. In the state of Florida, tr- great college baseball state like Texas, um, there's only been three teams that have ever hosted an NCAA regional, Florida, Florida State, Miami. No Stetsons, no UCFs, no wow. Florida Internationals or FAUs. So we were trying to be the first team to host that year. So we get going and we won our tournament We and we ended up being a host. And so you get a lot of ESPN cameras and they bring the whole, you know, kitchen sink in to do stuff. Joey Gonzalez, we were at the tournament up in Jacksonville and we went to some, I don't know, uh, uh, Buster, Buster and Only, you know, one of those uh, pizza places that where the kids can play video games. I can't remember the name of the place. I know it had Buster or Buster or something in it. And they got these hand puppets. So what happened, I didn't realize this until about two weeks after college baseball got done. Every interview I did, the fourth inning and the eighth inning, they make you talk with a headset. He was behind my head with these blue puppets going all <laughs> over the place. And the dugout was going crazy. And they didn't. They kept it a secret <laughs> for three <laughs> weeks. All the way through the draft, Gibby got drafted in the first round. We had Major League Baseball in the clubhouse doing interviews. And I still had these darn puppets going on for, forever. So, you know, just like the comical things you do off the field sometimes that just make you think about how fun That's it is funny. to play baseball. And not it's not always just about winning, I guess. I think no, it was yeah, Dave and Busters. Yeah. Dave and Busters. That's yeah, it. Dave and Busters. There you go. So um I've got a I've got a couple questions um that um that we have for, we have we have one from Jay Roberts and one from Jonathan. I'll give them I'll give them to you both and you can answer them in that order. Um, Jay's asking, um, how susceptible do you think Jeremy Payne will be to the infamous sophomore slump? That will be the first question. Mm -hmm. And then Jonathan wants to know, has Jeremy always been mature beyond his years? I can tell 
that he will not let the fame go to his head. So yeah. the first question, is he susceptible? Is is Are all players susceptible to that sophomore slump, or is he one of those kids that will work through it, grind through it? You know, I, I think averages are averages for a reason. I've always said that. And that means that you might start out at 100, but you finish up at 350, and you average out to your number that where you usually are over a long period of time. <clears throat> sophomore slumps, you know, what usually happens is that you see at our level, you see a lot of freshmen come in. If you play them a lot, they get hot really quick and then they might cool down or even their second year. It's only because people learn how to pitch to you. And so I think it's really combating how do you get yourself to the next level mentally as a hitter. Um, Jeremy's going to play defense no matter what. I mean, he's only going to get better. You know, when he gets a little bit stronger, I mean, he's 24, 25 years old. I mean, he still is just getting into his man strength, as I call it. But he's going to start getting pitched a little tougher. Now they have data. The analytics that we have nowadays in professional baseball and certainly in college, too, with video and synergy and all the things that we get from our uh, from our staff, you learn how to combat some of the, the hot hitters. But Jeremy um, is a guy that's going to work through that. You know, he's going to be able to to make those adjustments, um, you know, and, and I can see him certainly working with his hitting coaches and his video people to try to make himself become better. So he's always on top of things. And, uh, you know, it was funny because I watched a lot of the playoffs, and we don't get Astros baseball in, in Florida unless I buy MLB Network, which I did. I tried to watch as many games now Jeremy was up. But I remember the announcer was talking about he can't hit the breaking ball, can't hit the breaking ball. Well, if you notice, a lot of his hits were on the breaking ball towards the playoffs because he was sitting on it or he's combating what they were trying to do to him. So it just goes to show you, as intelligent he is. And, you know, to the second question about, you know, Jeremy being humble and, and really not letting it get to his head, you know, Jeremy's focused on winning. I'm, I'm telling you, he, he's a special breed. Um, he, he's going to go out of his way. I, I saw something where he was serving at one of the local fast food stores recently and, and you know, doing some humanitarian things. Jeremy is, uh, <clears throat> he's, he's a guy that's going to, he's going to play hard. He's going to practice hard. Um, and he's going to represent Houston extremely well. He he represented the University of Maine, not Maine baseball, not Steve Tremper. He represented the University of Maine in the utmost standards and and, and with it, and complete integrity. And that's all all he's going to be doing for for Houston, you know, and and the city Amazing. and the ball club. So I think that he's not going to be the guy that's going to be flashing it and trying to, like I said before, he's not sitting there pimping home runs. He's thinking about getting a second base in case the ball goes off the top of the wall. That's what Jeremy's thinking about. And, uh, and that's just the way he was brought up. Yeah, I was, we were at, um, my son and I were at his first career walk-off game. Yeah. And when he hit that ball to center field, where we were sitting, we were sitting in the club section. Actually, we were sitting in Jay's seats. Jay actually um, gave us tickets to the game. We were sitting in his seats right next to the press box. And that ball just kept climbing and climbing and climbing. And I think when I saw that, I was like, you know what? This this kid, yeah, he's definitely special. And we did a little show on him before the series. I mean, before the season started, right after Altuve said, he's the next superstar Astro. And he really has endeared himself to the city. You know, he's got the whole thing that he – he does the heart thing with his hand. He he does that to his mom. And of course, um, I heard that it ruffled a few feathers with his with his girlfriend or I guess fiance, where <laughs> they had like a hundred thousand plus signs saying, Jeremy Pena, please marry me. Um, I even have um I, I sent something to um someone close to him. I had a girl who um she was passing notes in class, and I said, Let me see the note. And I'm not even lying. I opened it up and it said, I love Jeremy Pena all over the entire like notebook paper you know and i was like these are the kind of notes we're passing in class today. okay i'm not upset about that i took a picture <laughs> put it on instagram but he, i mean he really is he really is i think the biggest name in houston sports right now yeah i mean he certainly is he you know and and i think that it's not you know you guys are in the houston market and so you're you're you know you sometimes get sheltered you're like you think all about the astros you know i'm in the florida market right now and obviously the new england market might my daughters go to the University of Maine. They play ice hockey there. I still have a lot of friends. And, uh, you know, with, with Jeremy, it's a national market right now for him. He's a national star. And he's going to handle that extremely well because, again, you know, I, when I was talking to him two weeks ago or, you know, less than two weeks ago, 
you know, his plans are he's going to take some time off. He's going down to get an apartment down in West Palm because he wants to be close to the spring training center. Um, you know, he's going to try. I invited him to come up and work out at our place. We have kind of like this little field of dreams that goes in it, on at Stetson at Melching. You know, DeGrom walks in and, and uh, you know, Chris, uh, 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 excuse me, Austin Hayes walks in from the Orioles. Some guys that are all live in the Orlando area and a bunch of minor leaguers. So they work out all January and February. So I'm hoping he drives and makes a two and a half hour ride up and, and comes up. But, you know, he's going he's gonna to get right back to work here pretty soon. All right. My last question is, um, I know he had 22 home runs this year, 11 stolen bases. Do you see him potentially being a 30, 30 player or is a 2020 kind of where he's probably going to sit at? Yeah, that's a great question, uh, Eric. You know, when he was at, at Maine, um, you know, one thing that stood out to me was his athleticism. And, um, you know, we, we, we run the 60, even though it's not a great measuring stick in college in, in pro baseball and college baseball, you know, we see all these guys run the 60. And anybody that runs a 6'8 or below, you're like, oh, that's pretty good wheels. Once you get down to that 6'5 range, you're like, man, this is the elite, you know, like big time speed. Jeremy was a 6'6, 6'7 runner. I mean, as a, as a freshman and sophomore, he's got good wheels and it's only going to get better. Um, you're going to see Jeremy start to get, um, you know, his, his base running. I guarantee he's going to start vault leading. You're going to see him start to get some kind of jumps and do different types of things because he's going to try to improve his game. And, um, you know, he's already hit 22 home runs. I, I can easily see this guy always being 25 to 30 home runs, if not more, as he starts to get even a little bit older and a little bit stronger and gets more at-bats. Keep in mind, you know, he's only has one and a half, two years of at-bats at the double-A level and right. above on, his, on his, <laughs> his, his resume right now. You know, that's very valuable to someone once they start getting three and four years into it. And I think that's why the Astros are so high on him is he, he did what he did right now. And he's got a lot in the tank still to keep growing. You know, um, next year talking about the rules, um, things are going to change because the bases are bigger. And um, before they rolled out those bases at Constellation Field, I was talking to Ryan Posner, the, uh, the um, you know, PR guy for the, for the Space Cowboys. And I looked over and I said, what is that? He goes, that's a base. And I'm like, that's not a base. That's like a, that's ridiculous. And he goes, he goes, pick it up. And I'm like, Oh my, Holy crap. This is huge. And yeah. I, and I put it next to the old base. Those bases are massive, you know, and I always think about this, the Houston Astros do this. Um, kids, kids steal a base, you know, promotion. I'm like, some kid's going to throw out his like his back or herniated. No, they don't have the old ones. I know. I'm just saying like, you imagine like <coughs> Astros sued, over base stealing um, yeah. promotion, but um, you know, I do want to. I I do want to ask you this: You've had guys like Corey Kluber, Jacob Degrom, Logan Gilbert, um, like we talked about before the show. A childhood friend of mine that I found out is number eleventh <laughs> all time. Clint, yeah. yeah, Clint Chrysler with nine point two seven strikeouts per nine innings. You have a rich pitching history, and you said you don't necessarily like to label yourself as pitching you, but when when you guys are out looking for recruits, mm-hmm. what are what are you looking for in an athlete? Are you looking for that prototypical prototypical picture? Are you looking for a kid that can play multiple positions? What is it that really stands out to you as a coach? And if I'm a parent watching, I'm like, okay, my kid wants to go to the next level. What are these college coaches looking for? Yeah, you know. Th- that, that's a great question, Brett, because we all recruit to our own styles, I think. And, you know, if you talk to the University of Florida and their head coach or Miami and their head coach, we might see it a lot differently. You know, what we look for, we look for athletes. Um, we look for, like you're saying, multiple positions. I actually look for multiple sports. You know, I love the fact that some of the Northeast kids that we bring down to Stetson are still playing football and playing basketball or hockey. And they, and they learn that compete factor. Kind of like Jeremy, you know, he played multiple sports at classical high school in Providence. And so I think that's something we look for, Um, you know, on the mound, you know, we're looking for those guys that have a little bit of growth. You know, we only get them for three, possibly four years. If we do our job and they get drafted, it's really three years. So we're looking for those guys that we can develop and take them from this step and go up three or four steps pretty quickly. So obviously arm strength is one of them. But really, just being able to throw strikes, um, you know, that's, that's a big thing in every level right now. 
you know, putting guys on and giving away walks and hits batsmen, it really kills you, you know, from the little league level all the way up to the major league level. So we try to develop that, um, you know, once they get here. And we do a lot of different things with throwing our throwing programs and, and uh, you know, throwing a lot of batting practice, throwing a lot of flat grounds and what we call short boxes, you know, to get these guys to understand the strike zone and then competing in the moment. Because we've all had these players where they look awesome in the bullpen. And then all of a sudden you get in front of 4,000 people and you're up, you know, three to two in the eighth inning against Florida. And all of a sudden the ball goes to the backstop because of the environment. So we, we talk a lot about that at our level and, um, and just trying to compete in the moment and learning how to lock in. Um, I, Jeremy, you know, look at the environment he just competed in over the last month and a half. I guarantee Jeremy didn't know if there was two fans or 62,000 fans screaming and yelling at that ballpark. He just learned how to focus in, and, and that's a trait of a really true uh, champion uh, at that point. And so I think for us at Stetson, we're, we're trying to get those really good athletes. Obviously, it's a good academic school, so we need them to have pretty good grades to get in here. Most right. of our kids are those 3-5 GPAs. We're proud that we have a 3-3, three, 3-2 three, three, GPA as a team. You know, wow. um, That's not easy to do when you're getting up at 6 a.m. and lifts and then classes and then videos and then practice and then study halls and all the other stuff these guys have to commit to as Division One athletes. I think that's something that we look at is to be well, very well-rounded. That's awesome. And that is really consistent with, with what I've heard. Um, I know a guy named um, – a, a guy, first name is Barrett, Coach Barrett. He's a coach at at um, Alcorn State, and we'll wrap it up with this. Him and him and Paul Maneri, when he was at LSU, um, we got to see – my son and I got to watch Alex Bregman, his freshman and sophomore year, play there. And, you know, he was an athlete. He was – he actually, he was a – he was a catcher, I think, in high school as well, and so he did multiple positions. And he said Coach Maneri told him that if a kid is a baseball player year-round, he goes to the bottom of the list, even if he's a top athlete, because yeah. he needs a sport. He needs a kid that plays multiple sports. And so, you know, with that being said, coach, we want to thank you so much for, for yeah. you know, for coming on. This was a phenomenal conversation and we definitely, and I know Eric would agree. We definitely need to have you back and heck, exactly. maybe, maybe sometime bring on, bring on one of your guys. Let's, let's, let's talk to one of your players. Let's get their name out there. Let's, let's get some exposure for Stetson because you guys got a great thing going. And because of your connection with Jeremy, it's kind of what what you know led us to you. But we found out there's so much more to Coach Temper <laughs> than Jeremy Pena. So yeah. continued success this year. We'll be watching. We'll be keeping a close eye on Stetson, the land. I got some family that are in that area as well. So hey, mm-hmm. maybe maybe we'll see you around one day. And um, awesome. y'all, you know, thank everybody for tuning in to Locked On Astros, making us your first listen, and make sure. That after you make us your first listen, you go to Locked On Sports today because that is the place you can get all the sports stories in one place in under 30 minutes. Check it out on this app, wherever you get your podcasts, and make sure that you make our team, Locked On Astros, your first listen every day. For myself at H Town Wheelhouse, for Eric at Eric Talk Strohs, and for Steve Trimper at Steve underscore Trimper. This has been a World Championship edition of Locked on Astros. And as always, go Strohs.